Hey everyone, this is Fred Ranger. I hope you're doing good. In today's episode, I had the opportunity to spend some time with the wonderful Fujifilm X100F, and I'm telling you all about it right now. So the first camera I've ever tried in the Fujifilm ecosystem was the Fujifilm X100. And that was way back when, six years ago, I had a trip to Italy and I actually brought my Nikon system with all the big lenses. And also this little new camera, actually not this one, but the X100 back then. And I was amazed by the color that Fuji was able to render. I was also amazed by the portability. So it's a very good pleasure for me to have this camera back and this is the F version of the uh, X100 and this is their latest iteration of this great camera. So thanks to Fujifilm Canada, I've been able to borrow this for the whole weekend and I've been shooting a lot. I mean, it's raining here in Montreal like hell. We have some floods and everything, but uh, I've been able to shoot it a little bit outside and a little bit inside. So I'll be sharing some posts or some photos along the uh, video today. But a couple things that I really, really like about this camera, I think one thing that even proved a lot on is the autofocus. This thing is now fast. I think it inherited some of the features that the X Pro 2 and the X-T2 has in terms of face recognition and also in terms of snapping the focus, getting very, very precisely uh, the point of focus that you like. Also, one thing that I really like about this new uh, X100 is the fact that the buttons are all in reach uh, and you can basically operate the camera with one hand. So uh, let's say you have, you know, uh, a hand like that and you grab it and then you can uh, look at your files like that with just one hand you can roll it like that and so it makes a very um, easy to operate camera another great thing that they've added is this ISO dial I know some people complain about it right here you have to actually lift it up and turn it if you want to change your ISO but what I usually do is I put my ISO on auto and but I use the dial the front dial I actually press it and I can change my ISO right from um, the front and that's also another thing that they've added is that front dial here and that back dial that you can assign to whatever function you want Another great, great things about that is the uh, battery itself. So it actually takes the same batteries as the uh, X Pro 2 and the X-T2. And uh, this is the NPW126, I think. Is that, I'm, I'm, I'm not really good with names. Yeah, NPW126S. I think it controls the um, heat a little bit uh, better than the one that's not S, but again, it will take your uh, X Pro 2 battery too. So great uh, little uh, thing there. I would have loved a dual car slot, but again, this is not your professional in-studio camera. This is a very portable kit that you want to bring on your travels and basically everywhere you go, because if you put the little cap on here, you can basically throw it on your neck or in your bag and you won't even feel the weight. Um, it's a little bit more uh, heavy than the X100 because, in, because of the battery here, uh, but you will appreciate the extra battery life that you're getting with a, with a bigger battery. Also, the EVF is uh, amazing. If you look at the um, actual, actual quality of the EVF here versus the X100, the original one, uh, I don't know how it compares to the uh, X100T uh, and the S, but I know that this one is comparable to, uh, you know, my X Pro 2 and my XT2. Maybe a little bit less bright, but uh, very easy to um, to see what you're shooting. And for me, the thing that actually makes this camera. Uh, very very usable is this joystick again that we found on that we find on the X Pro 2 and the X-T2 uh, Now you have it on the very little uh, very little portable kit. That is the X100 Hef um, So again, I'm gonna throw some pictures here and you're gonna see the quality of the micro contrast of this camera again great sensor this is a 24 mega uh, pixel um, camera. I'm not too much of a pixel peeper uh, or you know very attached to technologies. I just like a good photo and I know that this is bringing me the quality that I'm getting with my X Pro 2 and uh, my X-T2. And I just wanted to compare it to the ultra portable uh, Fujifilm X70 that you can see right here. Um, it's not really that much bigger. It is a little bit beefier, I mean, as you can see right here, but um, 
I think I might actually uh, ditch the X70. I might keep it actually. Actually, I gave it to my daughter. Forgot, forgot. <laughs> this is now my daughter's camera, so I cannot actually sell it. I will have to keep it. And uh, it's, it's great to have a daughter that uh, shares my passion for photography. But I think I might go with this one for all my travel. As you know, I travel a lot, so uh, I will bring that back to my kit. I really like the X Pro 2. It is portable, but this is an ultra portable uh, kit. And if you get the adapters or the wide angle uh, lens adapter and the tele that makes it a 50 um, you can actually have an ultimate travel kit just with that and the image quality with the Acros uh, film simulation and the classic chrome and all the goodies that you get on the other cameras is now to your reach with a very very small kit one thing that I didn't really like is this Q button. I know some people mentioned it uh, and I do agree with them that this Q button, I, I kept like hitting it and getting to the menu. I would love to be able to reassign it. Um, not sure how to do that. I tried, but uh, uh, not successfully. So every time it, it'll go into the menu, I don't know if you can actually deactivate it. If you know that, please uh, comment below because I would love to do that. So, uh, in comparison, I think it's really up there with the X Pro 2 and the X-T2 in terms of image quality. Ultra portable 23 millimeter lens, the equivalent of a 35 millimeter lens. It goes from F2 to F16. You can put it on auto or you can, uh, of course, choose your aperture. I found myself shooting a lot at F2 and it's not, you know, some people reported that it's kind of soft. I don't feel that. Again, maybe I'm less um, of a pixel deeper than, than some other uh, youtubers but for me it's all about the message the image uh, quality overall and not just you know pixels and, and sharpness it is a sharp lens and it is um, I thought it would be a little bit uh, out of date with the new sensor with the extra entry uh, sensor but uh, it no actually it's it's it works very well in tandem with the sensor that's in there so there you have it this is my um, very very fast review of the x100 unfortunately I will have to give that one back but I'm planning on maybe buying one for myself. I know, I know, this is a lot of cameras and lenses, but um, some people ski, some people golf. I make photography, so I will invest time, money, and effort in this. And if you want to support this channel and help me bring more reviews to you, please hit that subscribe button uh, down there. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you have any questions about the X100F, please ask them down below. If you have any comments, you can reach me at hello at fredranger.com and on all these platforms that are appearing like right across the screen. Thank you so much for watching. Be happy, enjoy life, and enjoy your gear. Cheers.